Everybody eating happily, getting started this morning. All the original crew anyway here. Everybody eating happily, getting started this morning. All the original crew anyway here. Except for one. Last night, my wife Heather and I, we got back with three new steers. Had to go a couple counties away to find them. Been real hard finding steers this year. Unless you want to bring them in from out of state. They're few and far between and almost double the price of last year. But we were real fortunate. Finding four steers at last year's pricing. And uh, met everybody through our friends and family. We sent some, sent some feelers out there trying to track down some livestock. And uh, like I said, we were able to come up with four. That was our goal. And we got them back last night. And uh, transition went real well. They came in and they mixed and mingled and uh, everybody ran around like crazy. They were all stretching their legs. Got back later than I wanted to get back just as it was starting to get dark. I was hoping to have a couple hours of daylight left just so that we could keep an eye on them a little easier and see how things were going. But uh, the loading didn't go quite as smoothly as you would hope, but that's kind of always the, the way it goes when you're dealing with these large animals. And so here's some of the new ones. This, this large brown heifer here, she was already on the farm, got her last year. She calved out last fall, had a real nice calf, and uh, really excellent mothering skills. And she went over and got breakfast this morning, and then tracked down these three new steers who are kind of feeling a little left out. They don't know they don't know how things work around here quite yet, and uh, she tracked them down and came over and started socializing. So, you can kind of see them there. There they are. They are Highland crossed with Angus. And uh, they have a pretty good size to them. They're in good condition. We went and looked at quite a few, quite a few steers in the last week or so, and wasn't really happy with the quality of the livestock. <clears throat> People were getting desperate and just kind of getting whatever they could at auctions and everything. These came from a friend of the family's farm a couple counties over like I said and he's been he's been raising cattle for I think over 30 years real good guy really knows what he's doing and the quality of these animals were what I was looking for I didn't have to settle you know they cost uh, we, we had a real real good deal come our way but 
the quality of those animals were very low and I was more than willing to uh, take these animals at the price he was asking for. So these two over here on the right, those have obviously a lot more Highland blood in them than this little, this little uh, steer calf over here. He lost his mom in January and he's been on a bottle ever since. And uh, he's just getting off the bottle now. And uh, I don't know that he's been outside of a barn much until last night, but he made it through the night here real well. Looks real good right now. Chewing a little cud. Yep, he's definitely got a more, more Angus in him, you can see it. And uh, especially for his size. We've got a little heifer calf from last fall and he's practically as big as she is and he was born midwinter. And uh, that's what that farmer was trying to do. He was, he was using those highland for uh, I think quality and resilience and wanted, wanted a little bit larger carcass better hanging weight, bigger cuts, and started crossing them with Angus. And that's probably a really good thing to do. But uh, up here in the North Woods, you know, it's, it's the end of April. And uh, it wasn't but a week ago that we had a foot of snow hit us and very low temperatures. And that's what we have to deal with up here. Really long, hard winters and uh, slow coming in spring and uh, short hot summers, a lot of bugs and uh, then back to fall and another hard winter. So the Highland does really well up here and it's got a, I believe a double eyelash really help them keeping bugs out of their eyes and they're also very good at grazing undesirable forage which is what I think most people have to deal with these days as uh, as uh, all, all these American farms have kind of started going to seed and getting brushed in and uh, had the cattle taken off the fields so they aren't nearly as productive as they used to be so I know on this farm we definitely need something that it will eat a lot of undesirable forage. Our pastures are, are really good compared to a lot of other pastures in our area, but uh, that isn't saying a whole lot. Yep, and here she is doing real good. You know, this heifer was almost a mercy buy last uh, spring we brought her on and uh, I got her because uh, she's a Dexter and uh, our Dexters are a little bit bigger I'm not sure if they've kind of been Americanized but they're not the dwarf Irish Dexters they're they're a bit bigger and that's what has been running in our county for quite a while and uh, she was looking pretty sorry and uh, but she had the she had the color variation I wanted. So we've got red, black, and this brown or chestnut variation in color. There she is, and that's what we were looking for. And also, uh, she you know she had a really good udder. If you wanted to milk these dexters, you can milk these dexters. And uh, they, as far as dual purpose goes, they've got one of the better milks available and we got her from the lot from the farm down the road and uh, I kind of I don't know if I was expecting too much we got this brown heifer and a large black heifer the biggest shiniest black heifer I could find there and she came onto the farm and she didn't really perform that well and uh, it was our first time buying cattle and uh, running cattle I haven't been around a whole lot of cows in my career. 
and I was I, I had in the back of my mind that uh, I read in one of Joel Salatin's books and uh, either in his book or during one of his talks I heard him say that you know you want to get the rattiest sorriest looking livestock when you go to somebody's farm because those are the ones that are going to come to your place and blossom they're going to put on they're going to perform they're going to do really well and uh, they're going to provide you with the best return and I had that in the back of my mind and I was waiting to see if it was true and right now so far all I can say is that that was spot on I mean her condition has improved dramatically her mothering ability is great and I mean what more can you say here she is with the new ones everybody else all the other six of them are overeating hay and she's over here, she come back over here and find these. Just to sit with them and calm them down, make them feel at home. So that's a real, that's a real benefit to have her in the herd. Whereas the other black cow, boy, she came on our farm and was doing well and putting on, but uh, the calf she had last fall uh, was born uh, knuckled over real hard couldn't straighten its front legs and we did a lot we did pretty much all we could try and get those legs straight minus you know we didn't we didn't opt for the surgery package because uh we are uh just getting started and you know can't really afford to do that sort of thing so she had to uh it was a little uh, bull calf, I believe, yep. And we ended up having to put that one down. And uh, the condition of the black heifer through the winter, you know, it went down a little bit. She's still doing really well, but definitely didn't outperform this heifer. And uh, we're real happy and excited about that. Uh, that's just some of the things you learn along the way, I guess. Yep, these new guys here, looking real good, settling in. This red one here, boy, it took us an hour to get him in. He got out of the catch pen, ran around the farm for about an hour until we were able to corral him and eventually get him loaded. All I can say is, uh, yeah, all I can say is when loading livestock uh, I've, I've loaded a lot of horses, things like that, through the years. Not a, not a whole lot of cows, but it seems to be uh, a universal truth that, you know, just go slow and easy and be gentle. And, uh, you know, they'll eventually just walk into the trailer themselves. And the 10 or 15 minutes it took them to get into the trailer, you would save you know, running around knee deep in mud, chasing them down all wide eyed and crazy. Real nice, beautiful morning. Well, it's time to get to work. Y'all have a good day.